Hi, my name is Julie Chang, and I'm the creator of 940. As in, there are only 940 weekends, from the time your child is born till they go to college. 940. 940. <sighs> okay, without sounding dramatic, I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. I also battled and survived a brain tumor. I'm also a mom of two and all of these journeys combined have given me a very unique perspective on time. That's what 940 is about. Actionable, accessible ideas that make this all easier. And gosh, I don't know, maybe fun? If 940 had a mission statement, it would be this. Me time matter for people who matter. In this episode, we explore the power of nature. Ah, oh, I love a good scorpion. It gets your blood circulating in a new way, your endorphins pumping. Well, guess what? Real insects can be just as beneficial. Just ask entomologist Phil Torres. I think there's these balances that you get between the exciting things for your mind and the curiosity and then the things that kind of excite your heart a little bit more. Uh-huh. In Power of Nature Part 2, we are getting really intimate with Mother Earth. Now, if this seems a little bit advanced for you, I highly recommend you start with Power of Nature Part 1, where essentially all you have to do is sit next to a tree and uh, talk to the tree. <laughs> Watch episode one. I promise it'll make sense. In the meantime, Ooh. Bill Torres, host of Expedition X and a bona fide biologist, is guiding us on just how to be more hands-on with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, and the plants, Phil Torres. Yay! Okay, freeze it. We have so much more 940 goodness ahead, but I need you to do me a solid. Can you hit the subscribe? And more importantly, the like, because we're new to this space, and she needs to go to college. She needs to go to college. She wants gummies. He wants me to get a boob job. I mean, like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hit subscribe, hit the like. On with the show. When did you know you have this love of insects? I had to have been like three or four years old. I, it was kind of a tie between insects and snakes. I would bring home snakes like every day. I would catch them in the, in the parks nearby, bring them home and let them go right outside my home so that anytime I went outside, I would find a snake. And my parents were obviously thrilled about this. They, they, they honestly were just like, you know what? This kid is passionate about it. There's a lot worse things out there than garter snakes. So let's see how it goes. But then from that, I started a butterfly collection when I was seven years old and kind of saw that as a entomologist, someone who studies insects, I could travel the world. I could discover new species. I could have these crazy adventures as a scientist and I was like okay sign me up let's do this so I, I was fortunate that I knew at very young age that this was my calling this was my passion and I just loved spending hours and hours and hours outside looking at nature it was like this this real life treasure hunt in the rare occasions that you haven't been able to engage in nature what have you noticed about your own wellness I'd say I just get antsy yeah I just get this itch to just go out. I, I love flipping over logs and seeing what creatures live under there, or what stage the plants are that I can recognize. And one of the things that really got me into plants recently was foraging. So now we're into the, the native edible berries, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. There's like a dozen species that are all delicious and make amazing jams. By spring, you start to see the leaves come out. You're like, oh, it's getting close. And then you see the flowers come out. And then the, the insects come and pollinate the flowers. And once that flower is pollinated, that means that is a future berry. There's just so many things that, that excite me about being outside and so many different avenues of, of observing these patterns and 
just kind of feeling enriched and hearing some bird call you've never heard before, seeing a flower you've never seen before that just kind of fill your mind. And so for me, when I, when I don't get that access to nature, I just get restless. All jokes aside, nature deficit disorder is a real condition and has been proven over and over again to increase our stress, anxiety, and depression. Look at it this way. Nature helps us to be our best selves. Our best selves foster better relationships. So in the context of 940, we have more quality time, more meaningful connections, if we are more attuned to nature. I didn't choose the brain tumor life. The brain tumor life chose me. And well, what was I saying? I'm just joking. Life is full of unexpected things, like when kids just walk in through your camera shots. But you know, there are moments that you can control, like what goes into your pantry, which then goes into their little bodies. What are you doing? <laughs> Psst, just because a snack says it's organic, it doesn't mean it's healthy. Oh, I'm not gonna bore you with the science. All you really need to know is that a bona fide, still practicing neurosurgeon mama created Sarah Belly. Who wants Sarah Belly? Me. Each pouch is packed with strategic nutrients to optimize brain growth, because believe it or not, 90% of our brain growth happens by age five. Make sure they get the very best from the start. And holy sh Use promo code 94040 for 40% off at sarahbelly.com. Or if you fancy, look for it at Whole Foods. Two 940 hacks I want to share with you. The first one is a natural history museum. Every state in the country has one. So yes, there are 50 of them. And many of them have a visiting butterfly exhibit happening throughout the summer. So I took my kids to the one here in Los Angeles and it was pure magic. The second hack I want to talk about is the butterfly growing kit. All for about $20, you can order online or extra credit points if you go to your local gardening store. And you can get these kits where you can see it from caterpillar to chrysalis to yes, a butterfly, which you can then release together. But you know, I say in the introduction of 940 that I want this space to be actionable and accessible. To me, that means something that doesn't have to cost money or driving time. And so I do have an idea, but I need you to keep an open mind, okay? Are you ready for the surprise? Mm -hmm. I got us a house pet. A pet spider, like does that count? I think we can count that. One of the great things about pet spiders is sometimes they just live in your home. You don't even have to buy them at the store. That is a house pet. Hi, my name is Drake, and this is my sister Lou. Okay, where is he going? Here. He's knocking on the door. <laughs> knock, knock. I, I love the idea of people just kind of sitting and watching a spider and, and seeing how they react to if you take a little twig and, and move their web a little bit, do they think it's food? Do they come running at it? Or do they get afraid of you because you're, you're big and scared? I did have a pet tarantula for a good long while, even when I met my wife. <laughs> She still accepted me for me. I will admit I grew up very, very arachnophobic, afraid of spiders until I started to just notice that wow, they're honestly everywhere. Like if I look around here right now, looking in the corner of my room, I bet if I looked in the corner of your room, Julie, I would find a couple spiders living in there with you. And what people don't realize is they live for years and years. So that little spider in the corner could have seen these like great transitions that your child has had over all this time. <laughs> Sometimes they're right outside. Sometimes they're living in a little corner and just observe them and see how they grow, see all the, the pests that they're eating. They say the only way we can gain back time is to be present. And the easiest way to be present is to take note of our sensory. Seeing how our spider Bobby moved, more like, oops, it got knocked off, or how Bobby sat still, awakened our feelings of excitement and suspense. AKA being present. And can you keep a secret? This episode isn't really about bugs. <laughs> it's about sparking your curiosity for the vast variety of nature out there. 
some really amazing movies and some really amazing documentaries out there that I know influenced me a lot and made me want to work in television when I was older. He positions himself to catch the sun. In our home, we are into anything David Attenborough. Current obsession is his show, Life in Color. Number one thing you could do for your local ecosystem is to plant native plants. In Los Angeles, cityplants.org will send you up to seven native trees, all for free. And all around the country, there's a slew of organizations that will provide seedlings, plants, and our trees, yep, all for free. And there's even some apps out there that are kind of make it fun and help you identify things. So the two that come to mind, one is called iNaturalist. It's great for identifying. You take photos of anything and it, it can identify it for you. It uses AI, it's remarkable. But they have a more user-friendly, family-friendly version called Seeker. Uh, hook up? <laughs> Phil meant Seek. And it kind of makes it a game where it's almost like real life Pokemon, where you go around and you take photos of a spider and it'll help you ID which spider that is. And then you get certain amount of points in the spider categories. And then you can go identify different plants and different native things. And so it kind of makes it a game. Look, it's a vagina. <laughs> First, a ladybug, and then a beetle, and then a moth. I looked at her profile, I was kind of scared because she was 25. And you're six? Mm-hmm. You know we're talking about a seek, not, not seeker. Seek. No. Different show. Yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, you were very poo-poo platter on seek. You're like, I don't want to do this. And then all of a sudden, you thought it was so fun. I'm curious what, what made you change your mind. I got to take my own pictures. Oh, yeah. Do you think it's also the fact that we made it kind of like a game? Uh-huh. A video game. Yeah, and you get points. Why do you think it's more fun when we do it with other friends? They get to experience it with us. Remember the whole time we were doing Seek, what was Lulu doing? Playing with a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it means like, Seek is a little too advanced for her, yeah? Mm -hmm. And if your own yard seems to blah. Ecotourism is a really amazing thing to go see nature far away. That oftentimes makes you appreciate the nature close to you. My recent favorite was Playa Viva in Mexico. The carbon neutral, self-sustaining resort with a turtle sanctuary attached was just what my soul needed to reconnect with Earth. I was living in Brooklyn as of last year. And so, you know, what I found is no matter where you are, especially someone like me who loves insects and the small little things, they're everywhere. So walking around New York, there'll be a little little garden on the side and you can stop and, and just be super entertained by what you see and what you observe and the patterns you see over time. I don't think not being near a beautiful forest keeps you away from being able to enjoy nature. Who is this? A recent study shows that more kids can identify Pokemon over common yard plant life, such as an oak tree. It's a palm tree! So get out there, gamify it, or stay in and bond with your eight-legged friend. Yeah? You're happy you want the house pet? Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> like a web. It's complicated. And I know when people think insects, lots of times it's things that they don't like, but there are so many things that are admirable and beautiful and wonderful and worth protecting. And worth your time. Because as we've covered, there are only 940 weekends from the time your kids are born till they flee the nest. And if nature is the key to savor those fleeting moments, then don't you want to ride that wave? Okay. Or is laying in a hammock more your speed? Well, you're in luck. Coming up on the next episode of 940 Power of Nature Part 3, Doctors Who Prescribe Nature. Yeah, real prescriptions from real doctors that include everything from chilling in a hammock to must get sand between your toes three times a week. Sign me up. But for now, you know the drill. Turn this off and go outside. Or <laughs> stay in and check out your plants. Bye.